Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily Digest. I'm Ben Olson, that's Nathan Fox. Together we're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. Here's what we talked about this week. We have an email here from Heg. It says, hi, Ben and Nathan. I was I started studying for the LSAT about a week ago and purchased your premium plan to start. I spent these first few days drilling and watching lessons and then decided to take a timed reading comprehension section today. I was pleasantly surprised when I was able to get a 95% accuracy on the questions I was able to answer. I got 21 out of 22. However, there were 26 questions and while I, I made it to the last passage and answered its first four, I was not able to even read the last four problems. I shouldn't sacrifice accuracy for speed, but how else am I going to reach those last few questions? Do I need to cap myself on time on the easier passages? That last passage just feels so close yet so far away. You know, hmm. what's what's crazy about this is that this is so great and it feels like this correspondent is just about to like mess it up by <laughs> yeah going hey, you, after those those last few and then yeah. you lose the whole you thing you just started hey just yeah. just keep practicing you've got you did one section there are a hundred practice sections of reading comp to work with so just just keep going um you i mean you actually read the last passage and answered a bunch of the questions so you're right there i mean you you need some to people go, are at two and a half passages you're at right. three and a half you are in a great spot yeah you just need a little more patience. Yeah, three and a half passages with high accuracy is a great place to be, especially because you just started studying. So just calm down. Uh, give it some time. Most people take uh, three months till they're ready for their first official LSAT. This could be a process. That's OK. You're going to see some backtracking. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to go up and down. Stop looking at small samples. This is one data point. Um, that if you look at every single data point, you're you're going to be emotionally all over the place. You've got to just kind of smooth it out and think about the weighted or not the weighted average, but the um, rolling average of your practice test scores and sections. Um, the way you're going to get there, Haig, is by dismissing the wrong answers more quickly. You're going to predict the answer instead of relying on the answer choices and then doing a process of elimination. You're going to predict the answer and then you're going to start reading A and it's going to be garbage right off the bat. And you're going to go, hey, there's four lines here, but I know it's wrong after the first four words. See ya. And eventually you get good enough at actually understanding the passage and understanding the questions and predicting the answers that you will be able to go fast enough to just do those four more questions. I mean, you're right on the edge of it. But I also want to remind Heg that there are people who score 175 plus and don't answer the last one or two questions yeah. on occasion. So yeah, you should never try your to finish. goal of these last four is not necessary to achieve astronomical scores. Nope. Get the right answer. Get them. Just get them all right. Run the table at the beginning of each section and then get as far as you can get while also keeping super high accuracy. Uh, that's what leads to 170 pluses. This email is from Anya. Ayana? Ayana? Yeah. Hello, Ben and Nathan. First of all, thank you for the podcast and all the helpful information about the LSAT and law school. I am currently a Demon Live member and have been studying part time since June. I've made some good progress. However, I am nowhere near my goal score right now. My diagnostic was 152, and right now I score an average of 162. I have only had the demon for a couple of weeks, but I can already tell the difference in my comprehension. My goal is to get at least a 170 for a fair chance at scholarships. Today, I just started my classes for the fall semester of my senior year, and my classes are very dense. Each class requires about 100 to 150 pages of reading a week, and I am taking five classes in total. Jeez Louise. 500 to 750 pages of reading a week. That sounds impossible. <laughs> this is why people get to <laughs> this is why people graduate from college, then come to see us for the LSAT and they're incapable of understanding what they read. 
Yeah, because the only way to read this is <laughs> scanning. <laughs> yeah, you you just that's not possible. So now each all five of your professors are <clears throat> so full of themselves, maybe that they think that you're going to actually be able to do their 100 to 150 pages of reading. Or maybe they don't know that you're taking four other classes and maybe that is your mistake, Ayana. Yeah, maybe well, you yeah, four, three. Un- four <laughs> other similar classes. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, that's a lot. Anyway, my goal was to take the September LSAT and apply to law school this cycle. However, with the way things are going in my classes, it seems impossible. Yeah, just don't worry about it. Ayana, take another year. You got your whole life ahead of you. Why? God, why would you rush from undergrad straight into law school? Yeah. You don't you just don't need to do that. You're you're only going to be in your 20s once. You do not need to spend your age 22 year or whatever it is in law school unless it's going to work out perfectly for you to do that. Oh boy, but then we got this issue. Well, okay, so sorry, I skipped a paragraph. Couple things here. So, next paragraph just says my biggest concern is LSAC ending LSAT requirements next year. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's the ABA. It ain't LSAC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. LSAC wants the LSAT to stay. Mm-hmm. Yes. The American Bar Association, um, they have a committee for the section on legal education. They recently changed their mind about a requirement that law schools use an admission test. It doesn't even say the LSAT. It just says an admission test. The committee has recommended that the ABA adopt this new policy and no longer require ABA accredited schools to use an admission test. They have made this recommendation before and the ABA has not adopted it. They've made the recommendation again. Will the ABA adopt it or not? We don't know. But if they do, all they're doing is saying you're not required to use a test for admissions anymore. And guess what? The law schools love using the LSAT for admissions. That's why they use it as the most heavy weighting. (laughs) No one's required requiring them to weight the LSAT super heavily in their admissions right now. They're just required to use a test. But they heavily weight that test because they find it useful. Mm -hmm. So it's very doubtful, even if the ABA does drop this requirement, some law schools might start making the LSAT optional, but I think they're still going to be very interested in your LSAT score because it's a good way for them to figure out who's going to succeed at their law school. Yeah. So I think you should just stop thinking about that. Ayana says, I'm solely dependent on the LSAT for a fair chance at law school because my UGPA is not stellar. I don't think I can get into law school just based on my GPA. And yeah, that's the bummer. Like, that's the scary thing, right? The LSAT does have a way of letting people rise to the top who their undergrad grades would otherwise just completely keep them down. Yeah, that's it has this egalitarian, um, you know, you might think that it keeps people down. Well, but what about all the people who it helps rise up because, you know, they've got the goods and they can crush this LSAT. And next thing you know, they're in the conversation now when their background did not lead them to have a stellar undergraduate experience. Yeah. Anyway, um, another cause of concern is that I am an international student and will be graduating in May 2023. This is the problem here, Ben. Once I've graduated, I'd have to go back to my home country, but that would not be a good situation since my entire family is residing in the United States on a different visa. Ooh, whoa, that's tough. This is one of those very rare applicants where it's like, man, you got to get into school or else you're going to have to leave the country. Hmm. The problem is that the JD is just so damn expensive. If you pay per credit, can you just yeah. like stay in undergrad a little bit longer? Take a class? Yeah. Don't can graduate? you postpone your graduation? Yeah. Don't wait. You're taking five classes right now. That's too dense. Just yeah, take totally. Three. <laughs> yeah, Stre- totally. Stretch out your graduation. Yeah, hopefully it's not too late. It's still the very beginning of the semester, right? Mm-hmm. Drop two of those classes. 
oh, they're not offered until next fall. Cool. Take them next fall. Your graduation gets pushed off by a year. Ben Olson, you're a genius. Ben just solved your whole problem, Ayana. You had the same idea, didn't you? No, I was no, I was stupidly thinking about like, well, what if she enrolled in a community college or some other program or something? Similar idea. Yeah. But no, you're already enrolled in good standing and taking what looks like too much of a course load. Mm -hmm. So push off to it, push one of them to the spring and one of them or no, you're already. No, oh, you've got another whole other semester in the spring. You're graduating in May 2023. Man, that semester might also be overloaded. Mm hmm. Yeah. See if you can lengthen out that year. Take fewer classes than really study for the LSAT. Get into the 170s. Apply next fall for fall 2024 admission. Get yourself a full ride. Boom. Boom. You're welcome. <laughs> I mean, uh, that seems like the clear solution. Anything else for Ayana? No. Update us. Let us know what you work out. Yeah, for sure. Email daily at lsatdemon.com, Ayana specifically, to tell us if this advice makes sense because we we want you to do this the right way. We we do not. I mean, Ayana's email ends with should I should I just suck it up and take the September October LSAT? And it's like, well, not if you're not close to your goals and you certainly shouldn't force your law school admission. You know, there's there's ways to work around this timeline that that don't involve you foreclosing your possibility at getting one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of scholarship money. So wait until your practice test scores really indicate that you're ready, Ayana, and yeah, push off law school for another year without getting deported. We have an email here from Priscilla. Hi, Ben and Nathan, exclamation point. I'm a recent Demon subscriber after watching one of your podcast videos on YouTube. Oh, all right, great. Welcome to the team. I really like the raw feedback you give to people, so I wanted to hear what you guys recommend to keep improving my score. I had been studying on 7 Sage for about a year on and off, semicolon. My diagnostic score was a 134. After that year, I have been able to improve my score to a 153. I've only taken six practice tests during all of this time of studying for the LSAT. Roughly, my score breakdown is as follows. Reading comp, minus 12. Logic games, minus 14. Logical reasoning, minus 12. This, of course, are my averages. During timed sections, I am able to score minus five on logic games. Okay. And when I review the games, I am able to complete and understand the four games thoroughly. Semicolon. The same goes for the reading comprehension section. During practice tests, I feel like the issue really is the timing. And from what I hear from your podcasts, I know you guys hate timing strategies. How can I improve my performance on practice tests? What are the knowledge gaps that I need to cover in order to increase my score into the 160s? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know what you don't know. We That's don't know why you, you don't have know. to ask specific questions. Yeah. The knowledge gaps are going to be buried in the individual questions that you attempt. And when you do a question and you get it wrong or you get it right and you don't understand why it's right, that's a knowledge gap. And you need to do everything you can to understand how all the doubts connect. Why does that passage make sense? Why does the correct answer make sense? Why does the wrong answer not make sense? If you can do that, then you've closed the knowledge gap a little bit, and then you go to the next question. And you keep doing that over and over and over again. You are going to make a lot of progress and close a lot of gaps. Yeah. Use the ask button, Priscilla. Um, always be, if you're not 100% sure about a question, you need to use that ask button and uh, make sure that the team can help you get to full understanding. If you're a Demon Live subscriber, you got to come to class and ask questions in class, you know, specifically, hey, this one gave me a hard time. Why am I not seeing it here? That's the question you've got to ask. Uh, students always <laughs> tend to ask questions that are at too high of a level. We need to get more granular with it and just ask detail specific questions about real LSAT 
individual LSAT questions. I'm a bit confused here, Ben. It does does it read to you that she's doing better on her timed sections? It seems like. Well, that's I mean, what she it says, sounds like, right? During time sections, I am able to score minus five on logic games, whereas during the tests, it appears to be minus 14. 14. It's a big difference. Um, it seems like you're giving the test way too much respect or deference. But weirdly not doing it during the timed sections. <laughs> like, what are you yeah. doing during the timed sections? Do that on your practice tests. Like, I I'll don't tell know you, I'll tell you, you know what? I know what she's doing. She's thinking about the whole thing yeah. in front of her. She's running a marathon from yeah. start to finish at the beginning of the marathon, as opposed to I'm going to run the next 15 minutes, then I'm going to run the next 15 minutes, then I'm going to run the next 15 yeah. minutes. Not let's, oh God, what I have to run 26 miles? Well, yeah. geez, forget this. Check out. <laughs> yeah, you're on mile one and you're like, oh man, how am I going to feel on mile 26? This is going to be <laughs> tough. It's like, well, <laughs> let's worry about mile two. Yeah, that is bizarre that you're doing so well on a timed section minus five on games, but then minus 14 when you do a timed section in the broader context of a full test. I mean, yeah, that makes no sense. So whatever you're doing on your practice sections, you need to try to take that into your practice tests. She's worrying about her score, probably, you know, like, oh, this is the determinant of my whole life and I have to do this and I want my family to be proud of me and all that. And it's like, yeah, but that's not helping you answer this question correctly. Yep. Refocus. Come back to the question. Cool. Thank you, Priscilla, for writing in. Welcome to the demon. I think we're going to help you a lot. Thanks for you're doing the right things. I mean, asking questions is what it's all about. So keep asking questions, but just try to make them more granular if you can. Uh, we have an email here from Ari. How would I'd you say, say Ori. Ori. Okay. Yeah. Ari. A U R Y. Ori. Okay. Hi. F I, that's my guess. Hi, friends at the Demon. I have a question for you regarding where to apply. I love the approach of trying not to pay for law school, semicolon. I don't come from a lawyering family, so I had no idea that was really an option, comma, besides standard avenues of taking loans and applying for outside scholarships. I mean, even if you do come from a lawyering family, most lawyers did not follow our advice and get a scholarship to law school. Your mom or dad, who's a lawyer, might be like, oh, no, everybody pays tuition, but they just don't know because they went to the law school. They went to law school 30 years ago and they don't have any idea what game we're playing uh, today. Yeah, the game has changed. The system is broken. And so now you need to play it in a different way. Yeah. Do you think it would be a good approach to use the Demon Scholarship Calculator to target which law schools to apply to, all other things being equal? Yes. Yes, that's exactly what we recommend. That's lsatdemon.com forward slash scholarships. It's not a calculator. It's an estimator. But that can give you a really good idea what schools to apply to. Mm -hmm. I've heard you guys talk about going to the best school you can attend for free. But in order to do that, you have to know which to apply to where you would get money, right? Let me know what y'all think. Thanks. All the best, Ori. Yeah, you, that's exactly right. So you need to go to the estimator and put in your GPA, your UGPA, your undergraduate GPA, and then your likely LSAT score or a score that you think you can get. and See what it takes to go for free to schools that you want to attend. Yeah. I mean, if you're already prepping, put your score that you're at right now. Like what's your most recent practice test score and then see what kinds of offers the estimator will spit out for you. Then, you know, put in 10 more points or 15 or 20 more points. Or sometimes we see people improve by 25 or 30 more points. But <laughs> it's astronomically. It's crazy. So it's see what wild. Happens. I mean, yeah. Oh, my God. If you put in even 15 points of improvement, you're guaranteed to see just like dramatic shifts. I mean, I bet if you put in 15 more points, you're going to see like 50 schools that go from no offer whatsoever all the way up to full ride mm -hmm. with 15 more LSAT points. So, yeah, play around with the estimator to start to get a sense of where you might want to apply 
I guess my other advice would be don't worry too much about where you're going to apply right now because you're still studying for the LSAT. You don't know what your real upside actually is. Yeah. Right. I mean, you might be like, well, I'm at 145 right now, so let me put 160. Yeah. But once you get prepping, how do you know you're not going to make it to 165, 170? And at that point, it's another entirely new world of schools that you should be really targeting. Thanks for writing in, Ori. This email is from Harry. It says, hi, Ben and Nathan. I'm a refugee from other LSAT prep courses, and I have been with the demon for quite a while. Your instructions are very helpful to me because I made little progress with all previous prep courses, but I improved greatly after adopting your strategies. For example, forgetting about time, focusing on accuracy alone, not skipping questions generally, one question, one sentence slash question at a time, etc. Could I also get your opinions on the popular strategies that I was taught uh, of reading only one passage and then go to the questions? Oh, so this is for comparative reading. Mm. Have you heard this tip before for oh, comparative absolutely. reading? Yep. Read passage A, then go <laughs> answer the questions that are explicitly only about passage A then yeah. read passage B and answer the rest of the questions. That's just such trash, Harry. It's a gimmick. It's not helpful. Not to people who are ever going to like really reach their highest performance on the LSAT. Nope. You read the first passage, you understand it. You read the second passage, you understand it. And as you read it, you realize how it is the same and how it is different from the passage you just read, which by the way is extraordinarily short because in comparative reading passages, they can only give you half a passage and then another half a passage, which means you're looking at eight sentences, seven sentences tops. And as you're reading that second passage, you're just asking yourself, okay, what is the author saying here? And how is this the same or different from what I just read? And that's all you need to know to answer those questions. That's what comparative passages are all about. Yeah. I, I hate this idea that you're going to like go try to get some of the points and then come back and then try to read it and, and get all the points. Just a disaster. Yeah. Thanks, Harry. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening.